called us to come together one more yeah bo one more time one more time god allowed us to come together one more time family i trust that everybody out there is okay i just got a message you guys could not hear any sound i hope you can hear it now oh my goodness uh i'm not showing my face today because uh, i'm not looking the best y'all i attended an event this weekend and it was very very cold outside and um I got chilled through and caught a cold and my face is all swollen, eyes are bloodshot. I don't want y'all to see me that way. Sisters, I'm sure y'all understand, okay? I'm sure y'all love it. Somebody else is saying I have a bad connection here. Okay, can you guys hear me now? If you guys can hear me, give me some thumbs up here, okay? All right, if y'all can hear me, give me some thumbs up. Y'all can hear me, give me some thumbs up here. Okay, yeah. Oh, buddy. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alice. All right. Okay, like I said, I'm not sure on my face, just my avatar today, okay? But uh, let's do what we do. Let's do the oath to the ancestors at this time, okay? And uh, hey, man, what can I tell you? You ain't always your best day, but I gotta give you the message anyway, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. Let's lift our voices together, everybody, as we honor those who have gone before us. Oh, ancestors, black of them a thousand midnights, African ancestors, it is to you that we, your children, give respect and honor. Oh, ancestors, we call upon you and welcome you in this place. African ancestors, let your presence fill this place. Oh, ancestors, who have been purposely excluded from the history books so that the world would not know of your greatness. Our African ancestors, who gave civilization to the world. Our African ancestors, who gave the arts to the world. Our African ancestors, who gave music to the world. Our African ancestors, who gave God, yeah, man, oh, uh, uh, yeah, our African ancestors who gave mathematics to the world, our African ancestors who gave medicine to the world, our African ancestors, oh, yes, 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 oh, my goodness, our African ancestors who gave God consciousness to the world, oh, ancestors. We thank you for devoting your life to make a future for us, your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Now stand with us, strengthen us, guide us, teach us, and protect us from the snare of our enemies. Rise up, O African ancestors, and let our enemies be scattered, and give us the wisdom and the boldness to deal with our oppressors and those who would hinder the liberation and empowerment of our people. Rise up, O African ancestors, and live in us. And we will not fail to honor you. We will not fail to respect you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yes. Ashe, 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 Ashe. Now, brothers and sisters, we want to yes. take this time to honor just a few of the great Africans who have gone ahead of us. We call forth their great African names and honor them to Pharaohs, Narma, Zoja, Sneferu, Khufu, Kafre, Menkare, and the great vizier and physician and multi-genius Imhotep, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To Queen Netokris, Queen Sobek Neferu, Queen Ahotep, Queen Amos Nefertari, Queen King Hatshepsut, Nefertiti, Queen T, and Queen Nefertari II, we say, Ashe. To Menkep and Rautahuti Mays, known as Thutmosis III, Amenhotep III, Akhenaten, Tut Akhamen, Ursa Mahatra, Setep and Ra, Rametsu Meriamen, Ramses II, Shabaka, Taharka, Hannibal, uh, and the yes, African yes. warrior Shaka Zulu, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To all of the kings, queens, priests, and warriors of Nubia, Waset, Ethiopia, Kemet, Kenya, the Congo, Tanzania, Uganda, Central, South, and West Al-Kibu land, we say, Ashe. Ashe. 
to the more than 600 million Africans oh, yes. whose lives were lost in the European invasions of Africa yes. and in the Middle Passage, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To the more than 300 million who have since lost their lives to racism and hate crimes, ah, we say, yeah. Ashe. Ashe. To Harriet Tubman, Ashe. Ashe. Frederick Douglass, Ashe. Ashe. Mary McLeod Bethune, Ashe. 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 Nat Turner, Ashe. Ashe. Fannie Lou Hamer, Ashe. Sojourner Truth, Ashe. Ashe. Carter G. Whitson, Ashe. Ashe. Booker T. Washington, Ashe. Dr. Charles Drew, Ashe. Ashe. Noble Drew Ali, Ashe. Ashe. Benjamin Banneker, Ashe. Ashe. George Washington Carver, Ashe. Ashe. Bishop Richard Allen, Ashe. 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 Bishop Charles Harrison Ashe. 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 Howard Thurman, Ashe. 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 Mother Mahalia Jackson, Ashe. 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 the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garth, Ashe. Ashe. Benjamin E. May, Ashe, Langston Dr. Hughes, Dr. Seth Binyakin, Paul Robeson, Dr. Asa Hilliard, Dr. Martin Luther King, Ashe, Malcolm X, Ashe, Thurgood Marshall, oh, Ashe, yes. Mother Clara Hale, Ashe, Elder Leon Adam Stewart, Powell, Ashe, the Honorable Ashe, Elijah Muhammad, Ashe, Dr. Amos, Elder Hughes, Harry Ashe, Williams, Ashe, Dr. John Henry Ashe, Clark, Ashe, Dr. John G. Jackson, Ashe, Dr. Elder Dr. Irma Jean Terrell, Ashe, Dr. Ashe, 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 Dr. George G. M. James, Chris Lamumba, Jimmy Williams, Kwame Nkrumah, Dr. Khalid Muhammad, Dr. Jacob Karebis, Dr. Ashaka Musa Badashango, Brother Ray Charles, to our mothers and fathers, our grandmothers and Mother grandfathers, Glover, to our great grandmothers and great grandfathers, our brothers and sisters, Ashe. sons and daughters, Ashe. aunts and uncles, Ashe. nieces, nephews, cousins, Ashe. and all those who have gone ahead of us Ashe. and have made their ancestral transition. Ashe. Ashe. Their Ashe. Life, Ashe. deeds, legacy, and contributions, we say, Ashe. 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 again we say, Ashe. 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 again we say, Ashe. 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 Yeah, brothers and sisters, we are so grateful today. For another day that the Most High has blessed us to see, and I thank you all for being with me right now, wherever you are on this planet. Yeah, man, it's a wonderful day. Again, I'm using my picture today instead of a live video of myself because, brothers and sisters, I'm just not looking the best today. That's all it is to it. Okay, uh, usually, you know, we brothers don't get into stuff like that too much. You sisters, you know, if y'all ain't looking just right, man, y'all do it, hide behind an umbrella, or whatever. Well, that's the state I'm in today. I'm not looking the best, but at least I want you to hear the message today. Okay, so listen, family, I'm going to ask you guys now to prepare yourselves. Okay, if you have a Bible handy, please grab it. Now, a lot of you guys out there say, well, listen, I'm, I'm done with that. I understand that, okay? But there are people who you need to rescue, you understand? And you need to know how to rescue them, okay? So that's what today's teaching is really all about. Uh, there are people who claim that they are Christians. I'm sure you've heard that before. Well, I'm going to show you today that people who claim to be Christians are not Christians, but they are, in fact, Paulinians, Okay? Yeah, and so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about, uh, you know, well, before we even do that, let's get into the circle, okay? Notice what it says. If you want to enlarge your screen, you can. The space inside this circle represents my realm of knowledge. All that I think I know about whatever I think I know is depicted right here within this circle. I must keep in mind that there is more to know than what is within the circumference of my awareness. Of course, I start all of my teachings out like that because I know I'm going to say something that's outside of people's circumference of awareness, especially today. OK, oh, my goodness, especially those who are still trapped in the religion of Christianity and Christian thought. Get your Bibles because I want you to see what your Bible says, not what Brother Ray has to say, but what your Bible has to say. And I guarantee you, you're going to hear some stuff today that you never heard taught over the pulpit before. I promise. In fact, if you had heard this taught over the pulpit before, you would know not to mess with this program of religion. But they did not teach it yet. It is in the Bible. In other words, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me give you just a foretaste, okay, of what I'm talking about. What if I was to say to you, okay, brothers and sisters, now follow what I'm saying. What if I was to say this? Brothers and sisters, for the last five years, everything that I've taught y'all, okay, uh, was not true. I, I, it was a lie. 
is a fable. Every what if I say everything I taught y'all for the last five years, uh, I made it up. Okay, I I I, I just fabricated it from my own mind, and and not only that, but I tricked y'all into believing what I had to say. Okay, I tricked you. I caught you with guile. I caught you with deceit. If I told you that that's what I had done for the last five years, how would you feel about continuing to listen to me? You wouldn't want to listen to me, right? Because I've deceived you all this time. I've misled you all this time. Well, brothers and sisters, do you not know that the Bible actually says that? It literally says that and, and what's deep about it is pastors all over the world every Sunday are teaching the deceit, which what it's, they're teaching. It. it actually says, I deceived you guys. OK, the stuff I taught you all is not true. I made it up. It come from my own mind. The Bible actually says that. OK, this is what the so-called Apostle Paul actually says. OK, it, now, so why isn't this taught over the pulpit? because they must maintain their control, you see? And that's what leads me to the next point here. They must maintain their control. So we go in here and say, uh, my objective today, the aim of this lecture is to begin the process of undoing and reversing ideas and concepts that have been programmed into the minds of our people that has caused us to adopt a cognitive reality. And when I say cognitive reality, I mean a belief system. That has resulted in our loss of contact with what is real, our loss of contact with what is factual, our loss of contact with what is historical, and our loss of contact with what is spiritual. Okay? Also, brothers and sisters, remember this, especially with today's teaching. Remember this. When you have told so many lies over the centuries that telling the truth about one of your early foundational lies and all the lies that have defensively been defensively piled on top of it, if you want to keep your power, then you must continue to lie. When your control and power over another person's reality is based on the lies about who you are and what they are, guess what, people? You can never tell the truth. Understand this. Understand how deep this goes. So today we're dealing with an analysis of the gospel of Paul. Why? Why am I doing this today? Because, brothers and sisters, as I just said previously, most people who think that they are Christians are, in fact, Paulinians. Understand this, okay? You think that you're following the teachings of Jesus of a Jesus Christ. No, you're not. Okay? You're following the teachings of Paul. In fact, 90% of the indoctrinations of the doctrines that are taught in the Christian church comes from the Pauline epistles, the writings of Paul, or the writings of who's been attributed to Paul since Paul never actually historically existed. Okay? Yeah. So listen, I'll come back after the end and, and acknowledge everybody. I forgot to do that, you know, the different villages and everybody. I'll do that at the end today, okay? Uh, but right now, let's get right into the teaching, okay? And I want you guys to uh, hear this message today. All right? So let's do that at this time. Yeah, buddy. Much of what I'm going to say today, family, many of you have already moved beyond that. Okay, so please bear with me as I share information with you that will help equip you to better set your brothers and sisters who are still in bondage free. Does that make sense? See, a lot of us are saying, well, I don't deal with that stuff no more. Okay, good. But now what? You have family members, you have friends, you have loved ones who are still bound in that where you were. Mm -hmm. Don't you care about freeing them? Mm -hmm. You have a responsibility, man. Yes. It's not just enough for you to be free. Because if you only experience freedom without the, the, the desire, the longing to go back and set others free, then I wonder about the validity of your freedom. Yes. Are you really that selfish? 
that it's like, I got mine. They better get theirs the best way they can. That is not the heart and mind of a true African. Okay, it was Sister Mother Harriet Tubman who became free. But she didn't rest there. She said, I got to go back and get other Afri enslaved Africans and help set them free. And she had a shotgun too. Oh yeah, man. And the shotgun, what shotgun wasn't for the oppressor. The shotgun was for Africans who decided they want to go back after being free. She put that gun up and she said, no, nah, baby, I can't let you do that now. Because if you go back, then you're going to tell them where we are. And we, we can't let that happen. You see what I'm saying? And she also said, I would have set more free if they had only known they were slaves. Isn't that deep, man? When you have people among you who don't even realize that they are enslaved, wow. Let's deal with this for a moment. Let's, let's lay the foundation here. The first thing we want to establish for you, brothers and sisters, is that Paul is a fictitious character. Everybody say Paul. Paul. Never, existed. Never existed. Now I know, okay, I forgot. Everybody make a circle. And those, this is for those who, even those who have done this already. <laughs> and still in the process of coming out of where you were or are. Everybody repeat after me, especially those of you who are watching me. The space inside this circle, space inside this circle represents, my realm of knowledge. represents my realm of knowledge. All that I think I know, All that I think I know. about whatever I think I know, I think I know. is depicted is right here Within this circle, I must keep in mind that there is more to know than what is within the circumference of my awareness. Now, in essence, family, what I just told you is there's more for you to learn. I know some of us think we know it all. And especially in today's message, those of you who are watching this video, those of you who are watching by way of internet, some of you who are sitting here, some who are listening to this CD, I know that today's message is really going to mess with a lot of people. Because today's message literally disintegrates the foundation of the Christian church. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Now trust me, I'm not trying to attack the church. You can't reach people by attacking them. I'm not trying to attack the church, I'm trying to free your mind. Did that make sense? Okay, I'm not concerned with the church, I'm concerned with your mind. Okay, and if I can free your mind, then you'll stop participating in this Program. Thank you, Bella. I didn't want to say it, but foolishness. Exactly. I just made a statement to you that Paul never existed. Well, Brother Ray, what gives you the right to say such a thing? Okay. No one in the Bible ever existed. Not one person in the Bible ever historically existed. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? All right. I know I'm already punching some of y'all. I know it. But just listen to me. Everybody hold two hands up. And say the right hand, right hand is, the is the platform of world history. World history. My, left hand My left hand is the platform, is the platform of, religious literature. of religious literature. On the now hold your right hand. On the platform of world history. The characters in the Bible, the in the Bible never, existed. never existed. Hold your left hand up. On, on the platform of religious literature, the, of religious literature, the, platform, of religious literature, the, 
the characters in the Bible, in the Bible were real. <laughs> now while you're at it, say, hold your left hand and say, also, also on, the platform, on the platform of literature, of fiction, fiction, Red Robin Hood is real. <laughs> the three bears are real. Goldilocks is real. That's the platform of literature. Now you understand, brothers and sisters, why I say, he who controls the printed page controls the thinking of the age. You got to understand that some people got together and put some literature together and then presented that literature as God's word. Teaching it to you from childhood, making you think that it is historical. And it is not historical. I repeat, not one person mentioned in the Bible ever historically existed. There's not one grave site on this planet for anyone mentioned in the Bible. A lot of people say, you know, because we used to challenge that and say, well, show me Jesus' grave. And folk would say, well, I can't show it to you because he got up. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me give you that. All right, well then how about Peter's gravesite? How about Matthew, Mark, Luke, John's gravesite? How about Thomas's gravesite? Judas didn't get up, how about Judas's gravesite? How about David? Ezekiel, Obadiah, Jeremiah, Habakkuk, you name it. Anybody, I mean, I can show you gravesites today of people that predate all of these folks by thousands of years. You got what I'm saying? So why can't you show me the gravesite of someone who raised the dead? Why can't you show me the gravesite of somebody who walked on water? Why can't you show me the gravesite of somebody who performed all these miracles? Show me something. It does not exist. So having said that, understand that my sharing with you today is from the platform of religious literature not from the platform of world history are we clear cool let's deal with this guy Paul I, I let, let's and for those who didn't hear last week let's kind of understand right off the bat let's lay the foundation that Paul made the statement according to the Bible that everything he taught he made it up right off the bat let's establish that so let's turn to Romans 2 16 if you guys don't have Bibles just keep notes if you don't mind Romans 2 16 if you have it say Ashe what does it say Says, in the day when God shall judge, in the day when God shall judge, the secrets of men, the secrets of men, by Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. Everybody say according to His gospel. According to His gospel. It says it plain as day right there in the Bible. According to His gospel. Turn to 16th chapter Romans, verse 25. When you get it, read it. Tell me what does it say? Now to him that is of power. And by the way, we're reading from the book of Romans, which is also known as the Pauline epistle, meaning it was from the mind of Paul. Okay. What does it say again? Now to him that is of power to establish you. Now to him that is of power to establish you. According to my gospel. He says it again. According to my gospel. Uh -huh. 
In other words, nobody else is saying this. This is what I'm telling you. This is what God revealed to me. Nobody taught me what I'm saying. I just want y'all to know that. I'm not, not, not saying Ray talking. This, I'm speaking as Paul now. Okay, Paul would have you know that nobody taught him what he was saying. He didn't go to school for it. He didn't sit at the feet of those who were taught before him. But this came to him from God. And you know how it is, especially with black folk. All you got to do is say, the Lord said. God. Not even God. God told me to tell you. You know, I got a word from the Lord. And we get, what is it? It's amazing how God can speak to other folk and you want to know what he said, but God can't speak to you. What's wrong with your ears? What's wrong with your heart? Okay? How about 2 Timothy 2 and 8? Hold on to your seats, family, because the, the scripture that she's about to read now puts a big dent in your belief system. I'm telling you right now. 2 Timothy 2 and 8. Remember that Jesus Christ... Remember. Now check this out. This is some deep stuff. Remember that Jesus Christ... Of the seed of David... Of the seed of David... Was raised from the dead... Was raised from the dead... According to my gospel. According to my gospel. Do y'all see that? Yes. You see, this is what you call the gospel according to Paul. Paul is the one who came teaching this. Remember that. Jesus was raised from the dead according to Paul's gospel. Now what's really deep is I want you to see where Paul by his own words based on biblical literature tells you in no uncertain terms that I made all this up. Not only did I make it up, but I tricked y'all into believing what I had to say. So turn to 2 Corinthians 12, 16. Now I know that this is a little bit hard to digest, but like it or not, family, it's here. And it's amazing to me about this verse, we're the verse we're really about to read right now. I've been in the church all my life and so were some of you I was a Sunday school teacher I was a youth pastor Bible college got my degrees seminary got my degrees pastored a Christian church for over 25 years and in all that time I never noticed the verse that we're getting ready to read right now. No one ever brought it to my attention. I don't know how I read, I read it because I read through the Bible many times. But this verse, for some reason or other, I did not see it. And I guess I didn't see it because I was blinded by the indoctrination that I had been cursed with. 2 Corinthians 12, 16, what does it say? But be it so. Check this out, y'all. But be it so. I did not burden you. I did not burden you, yes. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Being crafty. Being crafty. I caught you with guile. I caught you. I fooled you. I deceived you with trickery. Y'all see that? Yes. Everybody say, ouch. ouch. I know that hurt. Now here's the problem before going into the next part of this. 
If the Pauline message, grab this, if the Pauline message is a presentation of lies strategically designed to deceive the listener and make them believe something that's not true as though it is true if the Pauline message was designed to fool you, deceive you, and to catch you with guile, then that means that every minister who is today preaching the Pauline message is replicating or doing the same thing that Paul did. Having said that, let's look at some stuff very carefully. Let me let me make some statements that's going to, oh man, perhaps make many people want to turn off their computer right now or shut off your television right now or turn off your CD player right now. But I hope you don't do that. The Pauline message is the number one reason why we are in trouble in our personal lives. Did y'all hear what I said? The Pauline message is the number one reason why church people have to keep coming to the altar. The Pauline message is the number one reason why there's so much mess going on in our lives that we are not addressing. And I say that to you brothers and sisters because the message of Paul tells you that it's perfectly fine for you to be messed up. Because no matter how much you drink, no matter how much you do drugs, no matter how much you commit crime, no matter how much you violate your own personal standards, no matter how much you give your body away, no matter how much you put in your body, you ain't got no button to put in your body, no matter what you do that ain't right, no matter what you do that violates your own conscience, it's all right. Because the blood of Jesus has already paid for your sins. That's the Pauline message. Well, let me share something with you that's going to mess with some. Now, see, some of y'all that's listening said, that's right. No, that's not right. You have taken the responsibility off yourself. You have removed the, the consequence of, consequences of not being disciplined from yourself and put it on the cross. We used to sing songs that says, take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Brothers and sisters, let me share something with you. The people who've been singing that think that they've laid their burdens down. Because they were told, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. That dumb, sad song. And it's deep because we walk up to the altar
And somebody says to us, do you believe? Put your faith in Jesus. And you say, yeah, 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 Lord. Yeah, Lord. That's it. You're saved. And you go away. And you're more messed up than you were before you came up here. But again, the Pauline message told you to do that. I'm going to prove it to you today. Woo. Mm. There are two major doctrines that, oh my God. <laughs> Are the result of the Pauline method. Now there are many doctrines, but the two major ones has got us in a mess. Everyone say homardiology. And everyone say soteriology. soteriology. Now I just gave you two doctrinal names. Homardiology comes from the root word harmatia, which means sin. Hamartiology is the study of sin. Everybody, how many of y'all ever heard the word sin before? Yes. Come on, let me see your hand if you have. I know you have, yes, I know you have because you were taught that you were a sinner, don't you? Under the, under the color or cover or title of sin, there are two parts to it. Everybody say total depravity. And the other is original sin. sin. Alright, let's just deal with those two Pauline doctrines. Now mind you, what we're getting ready to teach is not mentioned in the Gospels. What we're about to teach did not come from the so-called words of Jesus. What we're about to teach did not come from the so-called words of his disciples either. What we're about to show you came from the mind of Paul. Okay? And as we go through this, I hope you can see why we're so messed up. The first thing I want to cover is total depravity. So that you know, and you may want to write this down, by definition, the doctrine of total depravity means that there is nothing good in you. Nothing. There's not one iota of good in you that can commend us to a holy and just God. Did y'all get that? Let me say it to you again. The doctrine of total depravity clearly says that there's nothing in us that's good enough for us to come into the presence of God because we are sinful. We are unclean. That's what Paul said. Let's prove it. Turn to Romans, the third chapter, verses 10 through 12. Romans 3, verses 10 through 12. What does it say? As it is written, check this out now, as it is written, there is none righteous, there is none righteous, no, not one, no, not one person in the whole world is right, go ahead, there is none that understand it, not one person on this planet, according to Paul, understands, go ahead, there is none that seek it after God. Not one person on this planet, according to Paul, seeks after God. Now keep in mind, Paul's message was to the Europeans. Oh, did y'all catch that? So maybe, maybe what he's really saying 
is there's not one European that's right. Not one European that seeks after God. It's almost like a teacher standing in front of her class. And she says to her class, ain't nobody right. Does that mean ain't nobody in the whole school right? Or does it mean ain't nobody in my class? Right. If the teacher says, I want, you to br I want everybody to bring me an apple tomorrow. Is she saying, I want everybody in the school to bring me an apple tomorrow? Or is she saying, I want everybody in my class to bring me an apple tomorrow? It depends on who you're talking to. So since Paul was talking to the Gentiles, maybe he was letting us know the true character of the Gentiles. Saying, ain't none of y'all that seek after God. Okay, but the Christian church, Christendom has used these verses to say that for everybody on the planet. Did you read verse 12? Yes, what does it say? They are all gone out of the way. They're all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. They are all together. They don't add up to nothing. There is none that do good. Check this out. There's not one of y'all that do good. No, not one. No. Not one. Let's go to the 23rd verse. What does it say? For all have sinned. For all have sinned. I'm not sure y'all have heard these verses before. Mm -hmm. See, all of these verses are necessary to get you saved. What does it say? Romans 3, 23. You read it. come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is called total depravity now let's go to the seventh chapter oh this is getting ready to get real deep here the seventh chapter i was going to have you just read the 18th verse but let's go to the let's deal with the whole thing here romans now mind you this again is from the mind of paul romans 7 14 what does it say for we know that the law is spiritual now wait a minute he just said what is spiritual the law he says in this verse that the law is spiritual. Remember that. Put a pen in that in your mind. Okay? Go ahead. But I am carnal. But I am carnal. Another word for carnal is sinful. Mm -hmm. Got me? Go ahead. Soul under sin. Soul, or I'm enslaved to sin. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What does it say? For that which I do, now, I allow not. Now check out how deep this dude is. Here's what he says. He's, or I should say really how shallow he is. Whoever put this together, because Paul didn't exist to do it, but somebody put it together and attributed it to Paul. Because they knew you would believe that it came from God if he thought Paul did it. Got me? He says in the 15th verse, for that which I do, I allow not. In other words, I don't understand myself here. Go ahead. For what I would. For the thing that I want to do. That do I not. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Go ahead. But what I hate. But the thing I don't want to do, the thing I hate doing, the thing I know I ain't got no business doing. That do I. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> now check how deep this goes. When I was a Christian and when I was unconscious and didn't want to take responsibility for my own actions that was good news to me you follow what I'm saying I'm saying yeah I can relate to that <laughs> oh yeah I can relate to that I know I shouldn't be doing with things I'm doing but hey, he had the same problem so hey go ahead read if then I do that which I would listen not. to this. Listen to this. If then I'm doing the stuff that I don't want to do, I consent unto the law that is good. My conscience agrees that God's law is right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Now then, it is no more I that do it. Now then. this is deep because now you're about to hear Flip Wilson come out. <laughs> but see now. Then I agree that it's really no more I that's doing this. But sin that dwelleth in me. But sin that dwelleth in me that's making me do what I don't want to do. So notice what he says. He says it's really not me. 
In psychology, we call this multiple dis personality disorder. <laughs> it ain't really me that's doing it, it's sin. Geraldine used to say, the devil made me do it. I ain't do, I ain't do that, the devil made me do it. <laughs> Go ahead, read. For I know that in me. Check that, now check out this, this is some deep stuff here. For I know, this is the verse I was gonna have her read it first. For I know, that in me, that is in my flesh, meaning in my flesh, in my in, in, in my very being, what? Dwell is no good thing. Do y'all hear this? Yes. Mm. Now what's really tragic is black folk are being taught this. Yes. I know they're being taught it because I taught this to them. I know that in me, meaning in my being, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Go ahead. For to will is present with me. For to will is present with me. In other words, I want to do the right thing. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Now this is deep. As bad as I want to do what I know I ought to be doing, for some reason or other, I just can't get it done. <laughs> That's, that's what it's saying. I know what I ought to be doing. But I'm having a problem getting it done. Go ahead, read. For the good that I would, I do not. For I know I need to be doing the right thing. And I want to do what's really good, but I ain't doing it. But the evil which I would not, that I do. But the evil, the wrong that I know I ain't got no business doing, that's what I'm doing. Ain't this deep here? I'm messed up as I can be. <laughs> Y'all see this Pauline message? Yes. See, when you, a person who talks, really, if a person was to walk up to you and talk this and explain this, you know, now, I, uh, Shelly, I got a problem. You know, I know what I ought to be doing, but I ain't getting it done. I don't understand what's really going on with me because I know what the right thing is to do, but the wrong thing that's on this side of my head is what I keep doing. I don't want to do what, you know, I'm all messed up here. You know? So, you, what you would say to that person, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Go ahead, read. I lost my <laughs> <laughs> now, now, if I do, that I would not. Notice what he's saying. Now, here's, here's the conclusion that I'm coming to. Now, if I do that which I don't want to do, it is no more I. That you again, again, it ain't really me. I'm, I'm convinced it ain't me. <laughs> but see, it, 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 it wasn't me. <laughs> wasn't me. <laughs> now, I know you saw somebody look like me, but it wasn't me. <laughs> if I do that, which I don't want to do, it is what? You just read it. What is it? It's sin that dwelleth in me. Read. I find then a law. Check what he, now check out the conclusion he comes to. I find then a law. That when I would do good. That when I would do good. Evil is present with me. Evil is always present. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Now, in, in my conscience, I know what God would have me do. And that's what I get happy about. I, I get happy. I give praise to God. I just get go to rejoicing. I go to claiming the victory in God. In my conscience because of what I know the Lord would have me do. Go ahead. But I see another law in my memory. Uh-oh. Now, y'all remember the, in the cartoons you had the little, little angel on this shoulder and the little devil on this shoulder over here? All right. See, so, you know, the little angel over here telling me what I know I need to be doing, but I got this other little devil over here on this shoulder saying, go ahead, what does it say? Warring against the law of my And mind. these two little guys are at war in my head. Go ahead. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my memory. Now this is really deep because he's saying there's a war going on in my head. One side of me is saying what I should be doing. The other side of me is saying what you should not be doing. And it looks like the one that keeps saying what I ain't got, I ain't supposed to be doing. That's the one that keeps winning out. <laughs> I don't care how hard I try to do the right thing. I just can't do it. That's what he's saying here. We got a problem. Because by your own admission, dude, you are messed up. So how are you going to be the apostle of Christianity?
humanity. Go ahead, what does it say? Oh, wretched man that I am. Notice what he says, y'all. I'm messed up. Uh -huh. I just have to admit, I am Foxtrot, Uniform, Charlie, Kilo, Echo, Delta, Up. So what is he going to say? Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Notice his message now. I've come to the conclusion that I got a problem. And not only do I have a problem, I'm telling y'all, I'm messed up. So who going to set me free? This is funny, ain't it? It really is funny now that you, now that you break it down and look at it like this. Who going to set me free? Who going to help me? Oh, wretched man, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Notice what he says in the 25th verse. Go ahead. He says, I thank God. I praise God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Jesus. Some of y'all probably seen that crazy fool. <laughs> I want y'all to know I'm free because of God. You all right, Miss? <laughs> Go ahead. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the Lord now, God. Now notice his notice his message. In my mind. I serve the law of God. But with the flesh. But in, in my body. The law of sin. I can go ahead and serve the law of sin. I want y'all to keep in mind preachers like Eddie Long. As we read this. Got me? Priests. Roman Catholic priests who sodomized little boys. As we read this, understand the basis of their activity. Okay. Mm. Wow. That's called total depravity. In other words, the doctrine of total depravity tells you that there ain't nothing in you that's good. So, stop trying to be good. Don't even try to be good. Just rest on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Let's now talk about the doctrine of original sin. What is the doctrine of original sin? So you'll know by definition the doctrine, doctrine of original sin coming from the mind of Paul teaches that all mankind is born sinful. And all mankind is born unholy. Because of what Adam did. Did y'all get that? Because of Adam's sin, because of Adam's transgression. Now again, nobody taught this until the Pauline epistles came on the scene. This is the gospel according to Paul, or what I truly call the false teachings of Paul. Original sin says because Adam disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. Now see, here's what's deep about that, because let me tell you how I used to preach this. So you can understand what I'm saying. I used to preach that you are a sinner, not because of anything you've done, man. But you're a sinner, we're all sinners because of what our parents did. And the illustration that I used to use was this. Grab this illustration. I used to tell folk, just imagine if your parents had a blood disease and didn't get it treated and gave birth to you. Would you have a blood disease? And people would say, yes. And then I would say, 
is it your fault that you have the blood disease? And they said, no. I said, that's exactly what happened with Adam. And you. That's the kind of stuff I used to tell people. Because of what Paul said. But now that I know better, if I could reach half the people with the truth that I've reached with the lie, I close my eyes in peace and be happy. You hear what I'm saying? Let's look at this whole thing of original sin because here's what's deep. You were born a sinner. This is what original sin teaches. You were born a sinner because of what Adam did. And the only way that you can be freed from your sins is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Have any of y'all ever heard that before? Okay. Let's examine this carefully and see. All right. Let's look on. We were just reading uh, in Romans. Go to Romans 5 and 1. Check this out now. Romans 5 and 1. Yes, what does it say? Therefore, being justified by faith. Wait a minute, what? Being justified by faith. Everybody say justified. justified. Now, the next thing I'm getting ready to come to and cover is called justification. Now, when we get to that, that's really going to blow your mind. That's, I mean, I ain't lying. That's really going to blow you. And when we get to atonement, y'all just going to lay down. Okay? Being just, everybody say justified, justified. means being declared, being declared. Not, guilty. not guilty. Wasn't y'all taught that? Yes. In Christianity? Yes. yes. Means you've been acquitted. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Being justified by what? By faith. Now check this out, y'all. Notice the message here. Being justified by faith. Not by discipline. I told you this is why we messed up. Because we've been taught that if you just believe, no matter what your condition is, it's okay. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, that that is not okay. All right? You want to get yourself together, then do not try this believing in I'm a Christian mess. That's what's got you messed up. That is not the African way. Being justified by faith, notice what it goes on to say. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now go to down to the 12th verse. 12th verse? Yes. Says, Wherefore, as by one man... Uh-oh. Sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Now wait a minute. Remember now, this is the doctrine of original sin. And the original doctrine of original sin says that you are a sinner, not because of what you did, but because of what who did? Adam. Because of what Adam did, right? Again, now did this some people in, in the deep that Jesus never said anything about Adam? <laughs> think about this. I mean, come on, think with me. The whole entire reason why you supposedly came from Krypton, I mean not Krypton, heaven. <laughs> the whole reason, the whole entire reason why your father sent you here, right, was to reverse what Adam did. But yet not one time while you're on this planet do you say anything about that. That ought to tell you something. Not one place in the Gospels did Jesus say anything about Adam's transgression. And yet Paul supposedly got what he got from Jesus on the Damascus Road. So now he's telling us about this one man, Adam. Read 5 and 12 again. What does it say? Wherefore, as by one man. By one man. And who's that one, and who's that one man? Adam. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sin entered into the world. Sin entered into the world. And death by sin. And death came along with it. Go ahead. And so death passes upon all men. And so because of what this one man did, death has passed upon the entire human race. 
For that all have sinned. And that is the reason why everybody is a sinner. Everybody say once again, Paul's message, Paul's message. came from his own mind. Now mind you, we done already told you, we done already read that he's telling y'all, I made up this stuff to trick you. I made up all this to catch you with guile. Y'all got this? Read verses 14 through 21 now, because it's getting ready to get deep. And the verses you're getting ready to read now is why they put Carlton Pearson out of the church. Go ahead. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Check this out now. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Go ahead. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Even those people who didn't sin, they're still under the curse of death. Go ahead. Who is the figure of him that was to come. Go ahead. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Yes. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has are, abounded unto many. Are y'all following this? He's saying, in other words, if one man named Adam caused the whole human race to be lost, then one man has also caused the whole human race to be found, to be saved. And he's also saying that just like the human race did not do anything to be considered lost, the human race does not have to do anything to be considered saved. In other words, it's called the gospel of inclusion. Everybody's included in the, the penalty of Adam and in the work of Christ. That's what this is saying. Go ahead. And not as it was by one that sinned, yes. so it was a gift. Yes. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. Mm -hmm. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Yes, what verse are you at now? 16, I just finished. Go ahead, verse 16. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Okay, 18th verse, go ahead. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. You get, see what I'm saying? This is what the 18th verse is clearly saying. Just by, just by the offense of one, judgment came upon the whole race. Go ahead. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the yes. free gift came upon all men unto justification. Everybody say justification. justification. Say it again. Justification. justification. Say in a moment, in a moment. Dr. Ray, Dr. Ray is going to tell us about justification. about justification. And now say, and it's good, and it's gonna blow my hair back. <laughs> this is deep, family. Okay, let's save some time here. Turn to uh, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 21 and 22. Making y'all think y'all back in Bible drill time, huh? <laughs> First Corinthians 15, 21, 22. What does it say? For since by man came death. Hear, hear it? Again, both of these are the Pauline writings. For since by man came death. Go ahead. By man came also the resurrection of the dead. So which, which two men are they talking about here? Adam and Jesus. Adam and Jesus. Exactly, right? Mm -hmm. And again, everybody say neither one, of them, neither one of them existed. You see how deep this is? What about, think about this, man. People are putting their hope in what we're talking about here. People are actually living their life from day to day thinking that what Minister Stewart is reading is the truth. Go ahead, sister. For as in Adam all die. Check it out now. For as in Adam all die. Even so in Christ shall be made alive. Even so in Christ shall all 
be made alive. This again is what God Carlton Pearson put out of the church. See, but see this gospel of inclusion when it says the word all, it means gays, lesbians, drug addicts, alcoholics, pedophiles, whoremongers, thieves. You, you follow what I'm saying? Everybody, as y'all say here in St. Louis. That's what that means. In Christ, all shall be saved, regardless of what you are. I repeat, that is a lie. We got to straighten this mess up. This is why the Christian church is so messed up today. Wow, look at verse 45. What does it say? It says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Yes. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Everybody say, and may want to write it down, so when you're sharing this with your loved ones, everybody say this whole concept of the first and last Adam comes from the mind of Paul. You may want to ask your family members who are bound in this lie, ask your pastor, those of you who are watching me right now, why didn't Jesus say anything about Adam? Those are the kind of questions you want to ask. Since he came here because of what Adam did, why didn't he say anything about it? Right. That's what's called original sin. Y'all, and, I, and I, I, be honest with me. What all we just read? Weren't y'all taught that growing up? Yes. Let's now look at the doctrine of soteriology. How does it fit in? Which also comes from the mind of Paul. Now, a lot of people say, "Are you saved?" You ever heard that question before? Oh, no. See, if the question when you say, "Are you saved?" The only way to answer that question, yes, means I have done what Paul says I need to do. And yet you just read, Paul clearly said, all this stuff I'm giving y'all, I made it up. Now let's look at the doctrine of salvation. Under the, under the umbrella of what's called salvation, there are two major points that affects every last one of us. Everybody say justification. justification. And everyone say atonement. atonement. We're going to break both of those down for you according to the Bible. And if you notice, family, only thing we're doing is reading what the Bible says. And I have to be honest with you, the more we break it down like we're breaking it down, the dumber it really is. But let's look at what it says. Justification. So that you'll understand, by definition, everybody repeat after me. Justification. justification. Say it like you mean it. Justification. justification. Means the acquittal, means the acquittal of, the of the believer's sinful condition because of his faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, God literally declares the believer, the believer not, guilty not guilty of the wrong he has done, wrong he has done if, he if he only believes in Jesus Christ. Did y'all get that? That's what, that's what we were taught, y'all. Listen to what I'm saying. God, God. <laughs> literally declares the believer not guilty of the wrong he has done if they just believe in Jesus Christ. It didn't say that the believer did not do it. It's clearly saying the wrong that they have done being declared not guilty. Let's look at what the Bible says. Turn to Acts 13. Acts the 13th chapter, verse 38 and 39. I hope you guys are making note of these verses as well. Acts 13, verse 38 and 39. 
What does it say? Be it known unto you, therefore. Be it known unto you, therefore. Men and brethren. Men and brethren. That through this man. Through this man. Who's this man? Jesus, right? Yes. <laughs> That through this man, Jesus Christ, what? Is preached unto you. Is preached unto you. The forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And by him. And by him. All that believe. Listen to this, y'all. All that believe. Are justified. Wait a minute. It didn't say all that stopped doing it. It says all that believe are what? Justified from all things. Are y'all hearing this? I have never in my life presented myself as a perfect man. Sound familiar? And then that Tuesday night, Eddie Long got up in his congregation and said, I am what God says I am. And now what is he saying? He's saying the Bible says that I'm not guilty. Roman Catholic priests who ruin the lives of children say, I am what the Bible says I am. You can sit up in here and see somebody's pocketbook sitting next to you and reach your hand over and it takes something out. You know you ain't got no business taking. And with this doctrine right here, go out that door in peace. <laughs> because the Bible says that if you just believe in Jesus Christ, You've been declared not guilty of whatever wrong you've done. You know, see, when you understand this sickness, you also understand why they can, why, remember back in the day, man, the gangland shootings and stuff? You know, they run, do a drive-by, the mob, and blah, 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 just kill somebody and get shot laying in the street bleeding. And a priest would walk over and do this on their forehead. Make a cross on their forehead and lay there. Man, laying there about to breathe his last breath. Come on. Hail Mary, full of grace. Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and in the hour of our death. And then smile and die. Because of this sick teaching. Okay, look at Romans, we read Romans 3 and 8, Romans 5 and 1, no, oh, we didn't finish, go ahead. No. It says, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Oh. Did y'all hear that? In other words, you are justified from all things from which the law of Moses would not justify you from. In other words, if I kept the law, that ain't gonna make me right. Mm -hmm. And by the way, y'all, when it says the law of Moses, where did they copy the law of Moses from? The 47, 42 declarations of my, actually 147 declarations of my art. That's right, that's right. So what they're actually saying is, putting faith in Jesus Christ makes you right. Doing my art does not make you right. Y'all getting this? You don't have to carry out the laws of my art. You don't have to live by my art. Don't worry about that. Just believe. Just believe in somebody who never even existed. And all your sins are taken away. Man, shoot. Look at Romans 9 and 30. It's getting ready to get real good now. Somebody snore? Oh, you're blowing your nose. Okay. I was going to say, wake him up. <laughs> I'm gonna wake, wake them up. I mean, we had we had this sister in our church. And growing up, we when you know little children in church go through some very traumatic experiences in the church growing up, 
and we had a lady in our church and uh, old lady and she had dentures and she would fall asleep in church and when she fall asleep her head fall back like this and when her head would fall back her lower plate would rise up <laughs> and that used to scare us kids man <laughs> ooh, you know I used to ooh, that was, ooh, that was, you talking about a frightening sight <laughs> she laying back in her t-shirt and all of it and I remember one day we had a guest preacher and he, she was sitting down there asleep. He said, y'all wake her up, wake her up. God don't like ugly. <laughs> we, I thought, I said, yeah, buddy. Romans 9 and 30, what does it say? What shall we say then? Uh-oh. Now, what group of people was Paul sent to preach to? The Gentiles or the Europeans or the heathen as he actually calls them in another book, in Galatians. Right? Okay. Now notice what he says. This is getting, this is getting ready to get real thick here. Y'all check this out. What shall we say then? Go ahead. That the Gentiles. Wait a minute now. That the who? The Gentiles. Everybody say the Gentiles. Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles again? The Europeans, right? Now according to the Bible, it's getting ready to tell you something about them. It says that the Gentiles, which what? Followed not after righteousness. The Gentiles, which did not follow after righteousness. Have attained to righteousness. Have attained to righteousness. Wait a minute. Here's a people... He's telling you, they didn't do right. They don't do right. But yet they have been declared righteous. Teach, what does it say? Even the righteousness which is of faith. Even the righteousness which is of faith. Not the righteousness from self-discipline. But the righteousness that is afforded to them from God by faith. Because the Gentiles, the Europeans, put their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And according to Paul, God has declared them not guilty for any wrong they've done. Are you getting this? Once you understand this mess, then you can understand how they can put chains around our neck. How they could take a razor and cut off the testicles of a black man. How they could cut open the, the womb of a pregnant woman. How they could chop off the feet of a black man simply because he wants to be free. Their Bible tells them that they have attained to being righteous because of their faith. Read. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, check this out now, had not attained to the law of righteousness. But the so-called chosen people of God, Israel, Is for Isis, Ra for God, El, meaning the people of the Lord, which of course is talking about the Egyptians because there were really no Jews. The Africans have not attained unto righteousness. The Africans who were living according to my art have not attained to righteousness. But these Europeans who were not living according to the law have been declared righteous by God. Are y'all getting this? Where yet? 32. Why? Because they sought it not by faith. In other words, the people of God are not righteous because they did not believe mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ. Mm. Go ahead. But as it were by the works of the law. In other words, they depended on doing ma'at. Mm -hmm. 
For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Wow. Y'all, this is getting ready to get real deep here. Okay, that's justification. Justification says that you've been declared not guilty by God. Wow. Okay, look at Galatians. Let's, I'm telling you, save time. Your point is made. Let's go now and talk about this next sick concept called atonement. Everybody say atonement. atonement. Here's the definition of atonement. Don't get upset when I read it. I'm going to be honest with you. I've been, as much as well as I know this, every time I read this, I get angry. Atonement by, and it's deep. What I'm about to read to you right now, I was actually taught this in 19, let me see, 70, I got out of the court, in 1976. I was taught this in 1976 in Bible college. What I'm about to read right now. But I was so blind that I missed it. The definition of atonement, and this is their definition, this is not right, this is their definition in theology. The definition of atonement means that the blood of Jesus Christ was shed on Calvary to cover, literally, literally cover or take away the sins of the believer. Thereby leaving, the, here, here's, the deep, here's the dangerous part. Thereby leaving the believer, notice I keep saying believer, thereby leaving the believer without any obligation to repair the damage done as a result of his or her sinful actions. Did y'all get that? Atonement means that the blood of Jesus Christ shed on Calvary literally, I mean for real, covers your sins or removes your sins of the believer, thereby removing any obligation that the believer has for making restitution for the damage done as a result of their sins. Let's read it. Look at Hebrews 9 verse 11 through 14. Hebrews 9 verse 11 through 14. But Christ being come and high priest. Listen to this now. Listen to this. And it's, again, it's amazing, y'all, because the verses that Minister Stewart is reading in the back, at least in the background we've come from, all of these verses was enough to make you get up and run around the church. I mean, really, I mean, just what these verses say was enough to make you go into conniption. Let's read what they're saying and see what it really says. Read. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come. But Christ, who never existed, became a high priest. Go ahead. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Yes. Not made with hands. Yes. That is to say, not of this building. Yes. Now Neither. check out this is deep. Go ahead. Talk about the blood here. Now go. Neither by the blood of goats and cows. Now check this out now. Neither by the blood of goats. Neither by the blood of calves. But, but by his own blood, but, he entered in once into the holy place. But by his own blood, he entered in how many times? Once. Once into the holy place. Go ahead. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now let me break this down to you. What it's actually saying here is he bled one time. And because he bled one time... It has obtained eternal redemption. Did y'all get that? Did you get that? In other words, he bled once. But, and that's why they make the, made up the song, the blood will never lose its power. Because he bled one time, but that one time that he bled, it pays for all sins throughout eternity. So what does that mean? That means that 
any sin that you will commit is already paid for. Y'all getting this? Now you see why we used to get him run around? Because we knew he was getting ready to do something more wrong. We knew it. We knew we were going to do something more wrong and it's already paid for. That's the reason to get happy. Well, brothers and sisters, I trust that today's message had meaning to you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And again, forgive me for having my picture up here today, but I'm not looking the best family. OK, so long as you guys can hear me, long as we're connected here, that's good. I was reading the comments uh, during the message today. Uh, guys, you have no idea how much it means to me just knowing that you guys are here, that you are learning, that you are growing, that you are uh, developing. And I trust that. I trust that from today's message, you can actually see how the program of Christian thought literally exacerbates, it enhances unrighteous living, okay? Understand how deep that gets, okay? It literally causes people to live an undisciplined life. They don't have to be disciplined. You know why? Because all they have to do is just believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, according to the Pauline message, and God reckons or sees them as righteous. Isn't that a mess? And then when you understand that, then you can understand how people can act the way they do in the church. Oh, man, brothers and sisters, we have so much to free ourselves from. You understand what I'm saying? Once again, thank you for being with me today. Before we get out of here, we must take a moment, okay? Oh, yeah, to um, ask you guys to share. If you're a substance to help support this work, okay? As you can see there, uh, you can make your donations, <clears throat> okay? And notice I do have tax, de tax deductible donations, right? You can make them if you want to donate through PayPal. Feel free to do that. Our PayPal address is... Uh, what African Village One at AOL.com, as you see there. Okay, if you want to donate through Cash App, our donation address is cash tag Dr. Ray Hagens. If you want to make your donation through Zelle, you can just email or make your donation through my email address, rayhagens at gmail.com. All right, and by the way, family, I do invite you to email me with your questions, okay, your comments, and uh, and hey, we'll, we'll get to answer them, okay? Yeah. In fact, what I really encourage you guys to do is I have this thing on Wednesday evening called Q&A with Dr. Ray. That's the whole purpose of it, all right, to answer your questions, all right? Not here on this platform, but on Q&A with Dr. Ray on Wednesday evenings, all right? So come on and join me there. Also, brothers and sisters, don't forget the Black Achievement Fund. Yeah, okay. Come on and join us there at the Black Achievement Fund. Yep. We are doing some wonderful things in the Black Achievement Fund. So come on and be a part of our experience. Come on. It's only $9 a month, family. Only $9 a month. Come on and get in there with us. We're growing, and it's a wonderful thing, all right? $9 a month. Our goal is to have, uh, what is it, 10 million people? 10 million people giving nine dollars a month will give us over a billion dollars a year okay to do whatever we want to do as a people you understand so come on and join us yeah all right join the black achievement fund baf.solutions see you there baf.solutions okay go there and join up with us there at the black achievement fund all right and of course it's time to get out of here now so what we're going to do is Sing our fun song, The African and Me, Loves the African and You. When we come together, there ain't nothing we can't do. And, of course, there's that for Wednesday evening. In fact, if you go to WBLR.com or theafricanvillage.org, you can listen right now to our stream that airs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right? So just go there. And, again, you see there on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. is Q&A with Dr. Ray. All right? So come on and, and support the work. Be, get involved with what we're doing. But once again, make that 
the Black Achievement Fund there. Go ahead and get involved in what we're doing, okay? Brothers and sisters, I've enjoyed being with you today. Uh, hey, man, it's been a wonderful experience as always. Thank you for being a part of our experience. And for all of you who've been in the chat room with us, thank you so much. Thank you guys so very much. I've been watching your your comments and reading them as you as the message was going forth, you know. And you know, I enjoyed listening to the message today because I don't get to listen to myself, you know. Um, I used to listen to myself very early in my ministry as a as a improvement tool. You know, I would listen to myself to see what I needed to stop doing, what I needed to begin doing. And after kind of getting the hang of my deliverance and my methodology, I just stopped listening to myself. But I enjoyed listening today. You know, uh, it's like I'm sitting back listening to this, this guest preacher here, this guest teacher breaking it down, you know. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. All right. Well, family, once again, thank you for being with me today. Let's get out of here by doing our song, The African and Me Loves the African and You. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. You know why? Because you're easy to love. Yeah, let me find that right quick here. Oh, man, I got the wrong. Uh, okay, easy to love, easy to love, easy to love, easy. Here we go. The African and me love the African and you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. Because you're easy to love. Yeah. Oh, shucks. Come on, get into it. I mer you. I mer you, which is love in the comedic language. All right? You're easy to love. Come on, everybody. The African and me. The African and me loves the African and you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do because you're easy. You're easy, oh yeah, you're easy to love, you're easy to love. Everybody, the African in me loves the African in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do, you're easy. You're easy. Oh, yeah, you're easy to love. You're so easy to love. Truth, justice, and righteousness. Come on. The truth that's in me. Love the truth that's in you. When we come together, there ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy. Yeah. You're so easy. You're easy to love. You're so easy to love. Yeah. Justice, everybody, come on. The justice in me, love the justice in you. When we come together, there ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy. You're welcome, Asha. I see that note there. You're easy. You're so easy to love. Righteousness. Ah. The righteousness in me. Love the righteousness in you. I see you, Dalton. Yeah. Hey, ain't nothing we can't do when we come together. You're easy. You look so easy. Yeah, yeah, you're easy to love. Ah, oh, yeah, you're so easy to love. Listen, the African in me love the African in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy. You're easy. You're easy to love. Brothers and sisters, I've enjoyed being with you guys today. 
thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here with me as you are every week. I murder all of y'all. I mean that, man. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I murder you. Okay, which means I love you, right? Okay. Until next week, same time, you guys out there stay strong. And I'll see you next week. All right. Peace. Oh, yeah. You easy to love.